In 1865, Dr. Armand Trousseau experienced his first of several diabetic patients experiencing a peculiar bronzing of the skin. This combination of diabetes, liver cirrhosis, and jaundice was termed bronze diabetes because of the yellowish bronze hue of the skin due to the jaundice. Thirty years later, the German physician Friedrich Daniel von Recklinghausen, experiencing similar patient conditions to that of Dr. Trousseau, officially coined the name hemochromatosis. Thirty years after Dr. Recklinghausen, a Dr. James Sheldon collected a history of cases of hemochromatosis and bronze diabetes. Interested in identifying possible causes and noting pertinent trends, Dr. Sheldon hypothesized a heritable trait predisposing one to the condition. He also thought it possible that one could, over time, accumulate enough iron in the system to build up to cell and tissue death, independent of the heritability. However, Dr. Sheldon's insight came before the genetic revolution and in the heart of post-prohibition America. The societal demonization of alcohol at the time had led most scientists to link the liver disorder to alcohol consumption, though without much evidence. Dr. Sheldon's ideas were shelved and largely dismissed until 1996 when the HFE gene vindicated his belief that iron overload was heritable. However, hemochromatosis' link to tissue and organ failure was never revisited the source of the accumulated iron never found out. However, it's of your benefit to look at the symptoms of hemochromatosis. Let's take a look at a list courtesy of the Center for Disease Control, or CDC. Reading this was puzzling for me. This is to say that the CDC is fully aware of the link between diabetes and iron overload. This is the same link noted by Dr. Trousseau and confirmed by Dr. Sheldon. Let's assume they've relied on our current acceptable values of serum iron to even consider hemochromatosis. Most diabetics don't meet that. But if Dr. Sheldon's idea of progressive iron accumulation could be correct, might there be a similar progression in the failure of tissues and organs? Why has the medical community abandoned this connection altogether? In my 21 years as someone with type 1 diabetes, I have never heard the word iron mentioned. This includes a genetic test for the HFE gene, or the hereditary tie to hemochromatosis, and no monitoring or dietary restrictions surrounding nutritional iron. 